Starbounders! Welcome to another segment of Arkin's Lab. In the previous episode, we learned about logic gates and how to employ them when designing more elaborate wiring systems. At the end of that episode, I left an exercise for those of you who wish to practice on your own. Originally, I had planned to solve that puzzle with you at the beginning of episode 3, but due to considerations of time and aesthetics, I've decided to do so here, in a separate video. It goes without saying that if you feel confident enough in your understanding of logic gates, or just don't find this puzzle particularly interesting, then you're welcome to skip this video altogether. This is purely for the benefit of those who want to compare their results with my own, or just want to be walked through the process. So, let's look back at the challenge at hand. Our objective was to create a protected door that can only be accessed by pulling the correct combinations of switches to unlock it. In our example, the correct switches were the first one from the right and the second from the left. Failing to pull these two switches, or pulling any additional switch, resulted in the door remaining shut. The first step of any well-designed system is to take a careful look at the main goal, to break it down to simple steps that combined will allow us to accomplish that goal, and to then compile and design subsystems that will employ these steps. Our goal is already very clear, so let's talk about the steps needed to accomplish it. Firstly, we want to make sure that pulling any of the incorrect switches won't allow the door to open. In other words, when either of these switches is on, the door will remain off. Secondly, we want to make sure the door only opens when both the correct switches are on. So, in grand total, the door switches its state to on only if the two incorrect switches are NOT on. And I'm deliberately emphasizing the word NOT. And when the first correct switch is on. And when the second correct switch is on. As you might have already inferred from my phrasing, for this exercise, we'll need a single NOT gate along with two AND gates. We'll wire both the incorrect switches to the NOT gate's input. Remember, this means the gate will turn off if even one of these switches is on, which is precisely what we want. Then, we'll wire the NOT gate to one of the first AND gate's inputs, and wire the first correct switch to the other node. At this point, the AND gate will turn on only if both incorrect switches are off and the first correct switch is on. We'll continue by wiring the first AND gate to the second AND gate, along with the second correct switch. And now, we guarantee that this last gate will only turn on if the right combination of switches is pulled, as we wanted. To finish this system, we wire the last AND gate to the door's input, and create the desired effect. Congratulations! You now have a simple protected door guarding your room. A couple of things to note. If you're genuinely interested in having the door protect something of value, then it's wise to place the logic gates composing its mechanism far enough away from the door and the switches themselves. Otherwise, a would-be intruder can gauge the correctness of the input from the switches by monitoring the gate status on their screens. Furthermore, in this example we've built a very simple 2 out of 4 combination. It goes without saying that you can customize your own combination however way you like, but we'll need to include more gates accordingly. As a general rule of thumb, one NOT gate should be enough for this simple design as all incorrect switches can be wired directly to it, along with a number of AND gates equal to the amount of correct switches you want. 
It's also possible to make your mechanism convoluted in such a way that it would be hard to decipher even if the mechanism was deliberately exposed, such as in this example. This is mainly useful if you want your lock to be more of a puzzle rather than an actual barrier. There are also far more superior tricks and designs to make your password even harder to crack, such as keypads or sequence locks, but we'll get to those when we acquire the appropriate tools to tackle them. That's about it for this exercise. Thank you so much for joining me in this segment. The next episode of Arkin's Lab should be uploaded to our channel uh, quite soon after this one, so keep a lookout for it. In this next episode, we deal with memory components in wiring. It's the first step to advanced wiring. As always, the comment section below is open for your thoughts, opinions, and questions if you have any. Until then, this is Arkin's Lab, signing off.